Hey, welcome back to the Morrowind Pacifist Challenge. Fun fact, uh, OBS does not like it when I tab in and out of Morrowind, so I'm doing this essentially blind. I might not even be recording right now, wouldn't that be fun? Uh, so before we head out, there were a couple things I forgot. Uh, starting with... Difficulty. Game difficulty is zero, which is medium. It's weird, I know. Uh... I like to play games on standard difficulty unless difficulty actually means anything. In any Bethesda game, it's artificial difficulty, so it's just numbers. I don't feel like dealing with bullet sponges in this game where we're, we're not, like... We're not gonna be doing damage anyways, so what does that matter for us? Uh, Morrowind already gates things pretty well. It's not as leveled as Oblivion and Skyrim, so... Another thing I forgot, hello, Nine Toes. Uh, this guy's a Blades Trainer too, and he's gonna give us some sweet moon sugar. Just maybe playing a little into the stereotype, but we're gonna be doing a lot of skooma in this run, I get the feeling. Each dose of skooma you do is like a 20 plus speed boost, and in case you hadn't figured it out by now, we're gonna be leaning towards the flight part of fight or flight. So that'll be fun. Uh, let's get an intervention while we're here. Not a drug intervention, like like the spell. or I guess just the scroll is probably best. What's our mysticism? Uh, yeah, no. Let's get a scroll. Eventually, we'll get like amulets in the leveled lists and we'll just use those. But for now, let's just go by and I'll... Uh, was it Old Mary? No, Old Mary's the uh, Alm Civi. Yes, Alm Civi intervention. I'm sure I just made a lot of the Dark Elves in the YouTube comments very angry. Scroll guy in Belmora is this guy, I think? Or no, he's this guy. He sells his shield and stuff. Yeah, I know way too much about this game. Uh, let's get two of those. I want the road. Goodbye. Aw, oh, you're a cutie. I was not expecting a whistling script. See, so yeah, that's that's an egg mine. Uh, if you want to, like, if you're not familiar with this setting, maybe go look into that. It's some weird stuff, man. But we're after another mine. I know I said we were off to pick mushrooms, but I remember that this is along the way to the mushrooms. Just across the ridge, right there, an ebony mine. Who's a good boy? You're a good boy. Like, Todd decided to embody all the ills of the world in the cliff racer, and then to make up for it, he invented scribs. I'm getting attacked uh, by a rat. Okay, it's not a Daedra. I don't need to freak out just yet. Uh, yeah, hello. Would you guys cool it? I said you weren't Daedra. You don't have to prove how cool you are. Uh, that's too much, isn't it? Where did it go? Did I drop it? Did I eat it? What happened there? Very strange. Uh, okay. I want there. Yes. Give me. I do not remember how to play this game. Ow. Let's get out of here. Now that we've got some nice ebony. Ebony is not a type of wood. That's why it's found in a mine. It's the, it's the Elder Scrolls equivalent of obsidian, except it's magical because it's also the blood of a god. A lot of weird stuff going on in this game. So yeah, the, the reason I went into that ebony mine was not just to get some like raw materials. This isn't Skyrim, although I think there's one NPC in the game who will actually make ebony armor if you give them ebony. But we're a bit of a waste from that guy, so I'm not going to concern myself with that. Main reason I went in there is because there's one or two NPCs in House Lalu, different council members, who will reward you for telling them the whereabouts of the lost mine. So we're going to do that eventually. 
Uh, I think we can get like a daedric weapon or something. Uh, not, not something to use, just something to keep or sell. Another thing I forgot to mention last episode. The reason why endurance is so important in this game, if you're obsessive about numbers like I am. Uh, endurance calculates your health gain per level and it's not retroactive. So if you gain only like one or two points in level one, so you don't get much health at level one, then you know, your second level up, you get maxed out endurance bonuses. That's not retroactive. So you lost out on extra gains from your first level. So if you're obsessive about making your characters the best that they can be, which is by no means necessary in this game, uh, do, do what I do and just panic every time you get closer to a level up. This game's fun. I'm having fun. Can't you tell? The bright side about having a failed recording is that this time around I'm not being chased by rats. Half an hour of recording, went through all the combat tracks, which was nice. We got to, you know, sample the music. Uh, oh, speaking of which. Yeah, I don't like these saber-toothed rats. Rats don't have teeth like that, Todd. I don't know why I'm blaming Todd. I don't think... I might as well blame Kirkbride for the way the rats look. I'm sure neither of them had any input in that. Like, rodents are known for their front teeth. They don't have canines. They're not vampire. I mean, this, these might be vampire rats. That would explain a few things. Ow. Should maybe stop looking and start running. I mean, I am running. This is as fast as I run. Oh, boy. Yeah, I don't think we picked up a belt last episode. We should probably do that. I'd hate for our, like, pants to fall down in the middle of combat. This soundtrack is full of bangers, as the youth say. I'm only in my 20s. I don't know why I'm trying to sound like an old man. I don't fit in anywhere. Uh, those are the other ones, right? Yeah. Four types of mushrooms. No badgers. No snakes. We get to say goodbye to friend rat. Goodbye. I will remember you. So I did some looking because I, I, I hate not knowing things about this game. And apparently there is not a Narano Manor key in the Narano Manor. Uh, Andres has one on him, but it doesn't show up unless you kill him. So that's not happening. Apparently you can bribe his manservant to give you a key, which seems like, I mean, for all- Interesting. Go on. These are not words for you. You did not hear anything. For all the talk that the Kimona Tong has about, oh, you know, we're loyal and we're, we don't like outlanders, like, they sure seemed real easy to, like, bribe and sell out another of their kinsmen, right? Is that supposed to be, like, hypocritical in-game, or is that just- something that they overlooked. Yep. Great. Uh, let's save, because I don't remember what the next fight is, or fight, quest. What do you got for me? Okay. Oh, that's easy enough. Greetings. Again, falling what into, exactly like, stereotypes. I don't know how I feel about fantasy stereotypes, because oftentimes they're written in such a way that they're, like, justified, or that the characters fall into them more often than not. Like, Ajira's a Mage's Guild member, right? But she deals in Moonsugar and has this, like, thing of 
swapping out a real soul gem for a fake one to sabotage another student. Like, it's a little underhanded. I can think of like maybe one or two Khajiit that don't fall into Khajiit stereotypes, right? It seems kind of offensive for something that doesn't exist. Okay, well... Okay, flowers. I'm gonna barter with you. Oh, she has Heather. I can't remember if Moon Sugar itself has any speed-defining properties. I think I'll just sell it for now. Brandy, too. I think Brandy's just strength, and we're not gonna need that. So, Willow Anther, Sunflower, and Gold Cannon. I'll go check Nakario, see if she has any of those. Well, that's a bust. She doesn't have anything else we need. So, yeah, we're just gonna have to go running around for more samples. Fun! Should probably heal. Do we have a healing spell? No. Do we want to learn one? Do we have any restoration? We do have restoration skill. Let's go learn a healing spell. That way we have some use for the magicka we don't do anything with. Is it the local necromancer who does healing spells? That would be ironic. No, not barter spells. Uh, sort of, yeah. Sure, I'll learn that. Well, that's gonna get annoying. I'm sure part of it's just because we have zero fatigue at any given moment. Yes, It's good training, though. It has somewhat occurred to me that since the area we're going to be going to is near the fort. There's also the other quests for guys we could pick up, but, eh. I'm not too concerned about having to backtrack. I'll just edit all the backtracking out for your sake. I'm not too bothered by it. I mean, I am, just I'm too lazy to go back. That's crush weed. We don't need that. So yeah, you see these crates? Don't don't steal from these crates. These are these are crates that belong to somebody. Uh, if I remember, there is no. Someone in this place sells ingredients, and we might be able to get some more of the flowers. Is it this guy? He's so short. Just can it. So that's another one. And also we could sell you some ebony, even though technically speaking, this is against the law, but whatever. I won't tell if you won't. So we have can it, heather. Still need stoneflower and willow anther. We're just gonna have to go find those. That's fine. Oh, let's pick up a Divine Intervention scroll while we're here. That could come in handy. Uh, where is... do you sell scrolls? Yes. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll take all three. Pelagiad, yes. Named after Pelagius the Mad, one of the worst emperors of Tamriel. Just little details like that. Uh, I don't know if you can find his hip bone in this game. I think he might be able to. Or is that Oblivion? It's in one of the games prior to Skyrim. I was surprised to find it. Right. So yeah, this is the lovely combat track. Well, one of many by Jeremy Soule. And they all just sort of play randomly and they don't really end very nicely. Like he's, It just goes from one track to another or else it just fades out. Once all the enemies are dead or gone. Uh, I have can it. Where are you, Heather? These are the ones I have already. Right? 
Yes. More purple. Oh, you are Stoneflower, right? Oh, this is Anther. Black Anther. Willow Anther. There we go. Uh, Stoneflower. Stoneflower looks like that, but blue, I think. Hello, miss. Have I seen a bandit nearby? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll try and find this guy. Cool. Yep. Here's a nice changing of the combat tracks. So yeah, there's the one bandit who's in Pelagia, and there's one bandit on the road from Pelagia and Sedanine to Vivek. Since we're playing a female character, instead of trying to mug us, he's going to try and flirt with us. So that's nice. Are you anything? No. Okay. There is, I think, an Imperial Alchemist in Pelagia, so we might get lucky there. Is that Cornberry? Yeah. Or Conberry. Is that the background? Yeah. That's alright. I think this rat would give up eventually. Is that what I'm looking for? I spy with my little eye something that is blue. Hello. Told you. Okay. So that is everything we need. Hopefully. Uh, let's go turn in this quest. You may speak. Hi, Nellos. Uh, you are... Yeah, you're Nellos. Uh, here's the glove. Note. Got it. So, we're just passing love notes. Uh, why am I walking weirdly? Like, I'm pressing forward and I'm walking in a diagonal for some reason. This is strange. Okay, I fixed it. I think we might have lost that rat by going through that garden. Yep. The Skywind development team has a really well done vocal version of this track with I think Ashlander vocals. Don't quote me on that. I don't I don't even know where they got like an Ashlander language dictionary from. Welcome. Please don't be shy. I'm listening. Uh, here, here's a note. Great. If I'm ever in Telbernara, I'll go see her. Civi. We should be close to Belmar by now. Yay! Fast travel in this game is messy, and I like, I kind of love it. Between the interventions and all the different, like, modes of transit, like public transit, it's great. It's, it's like a little puzzle every time you want to get from point A to point B. I'm sure some people find it really annoying. Gabby, are you gonna go, like, if that creature visits again, I think I'll have choice words to say. What creature? I don't... like... So much of the incidental dialogue in this game has a story to tell, and it just never does. Here are your flowers. Great. Do you have any more duties? Ceramic bowl. Okay, okay sure. I'll get a bowl. I don't remember this quest. I mean, I do now, basically, but... This is just one bit of busy work after... Which is fair. Uh, hey, do you have any duties for me? No, okay, well, here. Oh, 
requirements. Right. I need to be Go good ahead, at magic. What do you that might be a problem. I didn't think about requirements when I said, oh, I'm going to try and do all the different factions. So, Revere. You sell Skuma, don't you? Not that I need any. No, he does not. Strange. Yeah, so my goal. No, just one. Actually, you're probably a good person to offload all that to. There you go. Oh, right. This whole thing. Yes. That's why Galbadir is still down here. You don't want the bowl. Oh, you do want the bowl. Here. Okay, well, I know where the reports are. Because she's still down here. She didn't hide them very far. Or did she? Nope, found them. Like, there's actually a full written report on what those flowers do. Oh, I need the mushroom report too. That makes sense. Is there something yeah, but here, what did you do with these things? Yes, I am suggesting that. The second I do it, I get kicked out of the guild, and Galvadir just... This is nepotism in action. Are they up here? Yes. thought I remembered them being up here. Yeah, look. Mushrooms. And their effects. Fascinating. Oh, so hold on. Way to throw me under the bus, Nigeria. I thought we, like, had some sort of mutual respect for one another. Here are your reports. Some exclusive potions. That's not bad. Duties. Okay, so... We may be able to get something from Rannis, but probably not. Okay, so I need to be higher rank before she'll give me anything. What do I need to advance? Need one skill at 10, but not restoration, which is like the only one I have, huh? That sucks. Okay, so... We could level... One of the is alchemy one. Alchemy, mysticism, illusion, altercation, destruction, and enchant. I think those are all willpower or intelligence, which means we're probably not going to be doing these for actually. Wait, illusion is personality. Yeah, no. Let's let's boost our illusion. Uh, not yet, though. We probably want to keep leveling up naturally first. Everyone in this game is sniffling and coughing, and in a post-pandemic world, I do not like it. Like, I get that it's like, oh, you know, we're living in a volcanic region, there's a, there's a magical blight going around, but no, this is setting off all of my alarm bells. Nobody's wearing a mask. Really should. That, that volcanic ash will mess up your throat real good. I mean, listen to these people talk. Ah, uh, greetings. What shall we talk about? Uh, orders. Yes, it's fought. Uh, okay. Yay. Free book to sell. I don't think any of the history books provide you with skills, so... That's not to say I haven't read them. I've, I've read basically every text in this game. It's not something you should be proud of, to be honest. How can I help you? You got any history books? You got any current event books? No. Okay. Well, here, In favor. So now we're going to delve into a dangerous ruin that is illegal to access. 
so things are just going really well here. Gotta love the orchestra swell of Nerevar Rising while we're just walking through town. What a grand and intoxicating experience. So yeah, like I was saying earlier, you have the fort here, and if you go up this way, you get to the Dwemer Ruin of Arkenthad. Is that how you pronounce it? Arkenthad. Yeah, that was close. This is probably going to be our first sighting of cliff racers. As well as a battle with a very annoying bandit. Yeah, we're probably gonna die here. Yoink, uh, glass, please. Uh, gold, yes, don't like the sound of that. I stole all your gold, that's what you get for being a bridge troll. Ow! Okay, uh, let's heal. Uh, hey, let's take a spell absorption along with our restore health. Turn the crank. Get in the ruin. Uh, we don't need a torch. Do we have sneak as a skill? Yes, okay. Well, that's probably going to level up pretty fast. We don't want to rely on it too much. So, the one thing people always miss about this place is that we don't need to go there or there, we just need to go there. So if we can, I'd like to try and just jump down there. Oh. I'm just as surprised as anyone watching that that worked. Let's get the coin. Uh, Dwemer Spear. The bowl's not really worth a lot. Paper? No. We don't need paper. Alright, sneaking only gets us so far. Okay, grab. Anything else useful? Uh, no. Okay, time to... I'm Sivvy out. Goodbye. Uh, yeah, we're gonna need chameleon or something for actual dungeons. Because enclosed spaces and pacifism do not mix well. I was gonna pop one of our uh, shields and then I realized that the elemental shields, they don't resist elements, they cause elements. So we'd be doing damage, which is a big no-no, if you remember the rules. I mean, we, we get damage, we just can't kill them, and I wouldn't want to chance it. I suppose I have a moment. So let's go give the puzzle box. This also means we get the key instead of like trying to lockpick through that door. That'll be nice. And I don't care. Yeah, okay. Now we want. Yes. Sharn, the necromancer. Even though she says she's not a necromancer. Since we're doing all the quests that don't involve killing people, we're gonna have to prove that she's a necromancer, but we don't gotta do that right away. It's pretty difficult at a low level to get away with stealing the mage's guild without getting caught, despite how easy that stupid wood elf makes it look. Should probably sell our loot too. I'll sell to the fighter's guild, because that guy's gonna give us better prices. Got a few minutes if you need something. That's not bad. Can sell these books. A coin. I mean, one Dwemer coin isn't really going to get us anywhere. Okay, so now's the part where I 
start questioning this whole thing. Because the ancestral tomb is going to be a pain to get into without fighting our way through it, right? Like, there are some tough undead enemies for our level, and we don't have any armor. We don't really have any way to, like, turn und would turn undead. That doesn't kill enemies. Let me see if anyone has turn undead. I guess a turn spell would be something that the temples would have, right? Speaking of, we could go join the uh, the tribunal temple. Do the pilgrims path. I don't think that requires actually killing anybody. Does it? Oh god, does it? I'm gonna have to look this up. Okay, so no. Doing the pilgrims path does not require us to kill anything. So, yes. We're gonna do that. Mark everything. Great! Closest one is the fields of Kumu. And then there's, what, two or three in Vivek. The Shrine of Daring. The Coal Cave one. And I think that's all of them. So, it's not too bad. Yeah, let's buy Elm Subi Intervention. It's better than cluttering up our, uh, our inventory. Also, free action is just a joke. You can't cast spells if you're paralyzed. You can drink potions, though, so by all means, get, like, a cure paralyzation potion. Uh, mark and recall might be nice. Set eight into our gold reserve a little bit, but we have a bunch of books and stuff to sell. Some glass. These potions we don't want to use. I've got the invisibility potion, but the second I open a door, that potion's gonna wear off. So that's not really useful for a tomb or any other type of dungeon. So... We're probably going to want to get, like, actual invisibility spells or some other way to get through dungeons. Because that's going to be a big problem moving forward. It's by... what is it? Exquisite? Yeah, an exquisite belt. Do you have an exquisite belt? You do. That's surprising. Also robes and skirt. Oh, I'm good. We'll just get a nice belt. What? No, not the amulet. The belt. Thank you. Yeah, it's the most expensive belt in the game. We'll eventually be like enchanting all of our clothing and stuff. Can you ask your question? But that's gonna be probably a couple hundred episodes from now. This game's a bit of a slow burn. Uh, can we join House Lalu from here? Or do we have to go to Vivek? Yeah, sure. So yeah. The mine we found, we could tell multiple people. I think Dram Barrow is probably who we want to talk to. I think he's the one who gives us, like, a daedric weapon. Now that we've turned in his report, Hasvat has a key from the puzzle box, which is not- it's, it's not just a key from the puzzle box, it is a key that literally is the puzzle box. It's very cute. Very strange, these Dwemer. Uh, but I think that's gonna be it for this, the second episode of the Morrowind Pacifist Challenge. Something. I've organized the inventory, cleared out about as much space as possible, because the more you're carrying, the slower you go, obviously. Uh, we've got some very not great potions, which I should probably drink. We could sleep in one of the many free beds that are now available to us in Belmora, but here's the thing. This is the Game of the Year edition with all the DLC. That means that at any point we could go to sleep and be attacked by the Dark Brotherhood. 
Now, I don't need to tell you why that's a bad thing. But next time, I guess we'll... I don't know what we'll do. We've got a couple different directions we could go in. And we still gotta wait a couple days before the council club cools down and we can bribe a key off that guy. But other than that, you can go explore Arkthan some more. Try and sneak past all the bandits in there. We could go to Vivek and start doing Vivek quests. Because Vivek is full of quests and a lot of them are very easy to do. Uh, we're about halfway to a level up, I think. Yeah. It's very handy, this level up thing. It's, it's by default part of the uh, code patch, I think. So, even though it's not technically vanilla, like, I'd be keeping track of this stuff anyways, because I'm a nerd. But that's enough of that. I'll see you guys next time.